Yay! Yay! Hey, uh, more rotational and accelerated motion with a standard example. And this one is a Ferris wheel. Um, it's a, I mean, I guess you know what it is. Uh, you move around in kind of a vertical circle. Um, and the idea is, if you're on a Ferris wheel, and imagine that it's moving fast enough, is that at the bottom, you'll feel a little bit heavier than normal. Your apparent weight is where gonna, what we're going to be calculating, uh, which we talked about before. And then at the top, um, you will feel a little bit lighter than normal. Uh, so let's see how that works. Let's set this up. Um, at the top, um, what forces do... Oh, nah, let's do... Sorry. We'll finish with the top. Let's do the bottom. Because there's something else interesting we can do at the top. Uh, at the bottom, let's see. What forces do we have? We got... It's only in the vertical. Nothing's going on horizontally. So uh, we got normal force going up as usual because you're sitting on something uh, and then gravity's acting down so let's set this up uh, you got n going up mg going down um, and that's it as far as forces go so now we've summed the forces in the vertical direction and as usual we set it equal to mass times how we are accelerating how are we accelerating we're going around in a circle right so it's mac um what we need to know is what is the direction right is does this get a plus or a minus sign and the way we figure it out is that that centripetal acceleration the acceleration as you go around in a circle always points towards the center all right so if we're at the bottom that ac is pointing towards the center of the circle so that's going to be positive oops so that's going to be mac with a positive sign so it looks like that. Um, look, there are really common mistakes that people make. And one of the most common mistakes is you say, oh, there's the sin. We say M times AC. That, that's like a centripetal force. So a lot of people will try to put that on the left-hand side. We'll, we'll try to say, oh, there's a centripetal force acting up. I'm going to use a different color so we don't mistake it. Actually, I'm going to use green. So here's my centripetal force acting up right and you almost think again we're talking about things in accelerated systems if you are the person on the ride then you would say oh there's something that's sort of pushing up on me um, making me feel heavier from the bottom of the seat um, and that would be the centripetal force pushing up and so you might be tempted to put that on the left hand side as one of the forces to be summed but what i'm saying is that's a mistake uh, that's a really common mistake that people make um, and the reason it's a mistake is because the centripetal force that that it, in fact I don't even let's stop it. Well, it's not I'm not even going to use the word centripetal force. That centripetal acceleration is the result of all the forces. You sum all the forces together, and that equals the mass times how it accelerates. So that's not something you add into the left hand side. That's a result of all the forces added together. It's your motion as the result of all the forces. So it belongs on the right-hand side, always, always, always on the right-hand side. And then you can figure out its sign by looking at where you are in the circle and then where's the center. Okay. So common mistake, never put centripetal stuff on the left-hand side. It's not a force to be summed. Okay. Uh, so I got this. So look, N is equal to Mg plus mac remember what we said before this is our regular weight mg that's what a, a normal scale would read and what's happening is that we're on the bottom of the ride we're adding this centripetal acceleration this centripetal force to our regular weight so you would weigh more right we're adding to our regular weight so if here's our standard person 100 kilograms uh and uh, let's say that r is uh, 10 meters does that make sense so it's a 20 meter high ride so i don't know 66 feet high that's a pretty big ferris wheel but that's like i mean maybe that's sort of a usual thing you'd find at a fair or a carnival um <clears throat> okay so this is going to be 
uh, mg that's going to be a thousand newtons is your regular weight plus uh, m v squared over r so that's going to be a thousand plus um let's see v uh let's say v is five meters per second all right that doesn't seem too crazy fast uh so you're going about what 11 miles an hour right meters per second to miles an hour as you double it and add 10 percent so um that's going to be about uh, 11 miles an hour that's not that's not too crazy i don't think um so this is going to be uh what 100 times 25 2500 divided by 10 so 250 so 250 newtons so 1250 newtons your apparent weight on the bottom so what's your apparent weight at the top now let's go to the top of the ride at the top of the ride uh let's see we have sort of the exact same thing going on there's gravity acting down right the same normal force is acting up so you might wonder what what's the what's the difference i got n minus mg equals those are still the only two forces in the y direction but look the difference is the centripetal acceleration when you're at the top it always points towards the center of the circle so when you're up at the top that's pointing in the same direction as mg um, which we called negative so the difference is at the top that's a negative right so look our normal force our apparent weight is going to be mg minus mac so we're subtracting something from our regular weight we weigh less up at the top so this is going to be the numbers are the same 1000 minus 250 it's going to be 750 right so we weigh less up at the top than our regular weight very very cool um we can do something kind of interesting look what happens i mean this is this is mg minus mv squared over r right well v i mean there's no real bounds on v um in principle v could be anything um how how high could v get in in particular could it be could it be that those two things would cancel out where where mg and mv squared over r would be the same number could v be that high right so that you would get zero for n what happens if if n is zero what is that really telling you physically if the normal force is zero remember normal force that's the contact force between two surfaces that what that means is um that you're coming off the scale that there is no contact between the surfaces anymore in other words you're coming out of your seat you're weightless that's the way we did it uh on the elevator before so in this case you would be weightless up at the top you're coming off uh, coming out of your seat so when n equals zero then we would have and notice what that means is that the masses would cancel so everything comes off the seat right you and a little child and whatever it doesn't matter what the mass is everything is weightless at the exact same time um and so v what speed is that at which you would come out of your seat and feel weightless it would be the special speed square root of rg and in this case if r is 10 meters uh what 10 times 10 is 100 squared is 10. so the magic speed on this ferris wheel at which you would come out of your seat up at the top is 10 meters per second that would be i mean admittedly that's sort of a really thrilling ferris wheel ride uh there are not many ferris wheels that that would go that fast um and look what that also means if you come out of your seat up at the top then at the bottom you would be as as pilots would say you'd be pulling a g at the bottom you'd be pulling um you, you would weigh twice as much right you you're your mv squared over r would be the same as your mg so at the bottom of the ride you would feel like you weigh twice as much you'd be really squashed down into your seat so a uh, thrilling ride indeed right so being uh, squashed with twice your weight at the bottom and then no weight up at the top um 
And then from what we did before, 10 meters per second, um, I don't know, is that fast? What if you're watching this thing? Uh, what would this look like? Um, in RPM, how do you convert from meters per second in circular motion to RPM? What we said last time was the shortcut, just to get a feel for it, uh, the shortcut is to multiply by 10 over R. So what is our R? R is 10, right? So this, this is actually a really easy conversion. It turns out that this is approximately equal to 10 RPM. Is that a lot? Um, that might look pretty crazy. If you're watching a Ferris wheel that's six stories high, at 10 RPM, what does that mean? That means you do, it's 10 revolutions per minute. Uh, so what, that's one revolution every six seconds. So it would only take three seconds to go from the top to the bottom, three stories lower. Um, I mean, that's really moving. So that, that would be, uh, that'd be kind of a crazy looking Ferris wheel. That'd be, um, thrilling, uh, to say the least. So, um, neat. This is sort of a standard example, but this is why, um, you would feel lighter at the top and heavier on the bottom. And again, look what this means. This does not mean that there is some force. If you were on the Ferris wheel in the accelerated frame, again, we'll talk about fictitious forces. You may feel like there's something throwing you out of the chair. Sometimes they'll talk about a centrifugal force that throws you to the outer part of the circle. Um, or if you're on a flat merry-go-round, right? There's a centrifugal force that throws you to the outside of the merry-go-round. There's no, there's no force. It's just because you're in the accelerating system. Um, what you're really trying to do if you're on the top, right, is you're trying to go that way. If, if, if suddenly everything, if the whole ride came apart, heaven forbid, uh, you would move tangent to the circle. That's what you're trying to do. Um, but the, but the structure of the ride is trying to pull you back to the center, right? That's where the, that's where the real force is. Um, so there is no force pushing up on you from the bottom or throwing you off at the top. Those are fictitious forces from inside the system. Uh, from outside the system, everything looks perfectly normal. Um, and you're heavier at the top or he heavier at the bottom and lighter at the top. Um, just from a, you can see it just from an application of Newton's laws. Um, really, really neat.